I can remember sage grouse, so damn thick mowing hay that you had to get off the tractor and shoo them out of the hay or you'd mow them up. Uh, sage grouse can serve as an umbrella species, if you will, uh, uh, and, and con conserving sage grouse can have great benefits for animals including mule deer, pronghorn, pygmy rabbits, a variety of songbirds and even a variety of, of, of insects and other critters we don't think about too awful much. Uh, the need to save, if you will, or conserve sage grouse um, is, is largely based on the fact that we're talking about an extraordinarily unique animal, an icon of the American West, if you will, that was first described by Lewis and Clark, and in part defines our lifestyle as Westerners. If we're talking about a wildland species, they do not do very well uh, close to habitats that have been impacted by development. Obviously, it's taken a very contentious Endangered Species Act listing proposal to sort of make everyone come together. Um, and often that's, you know, that's the way it works when you're facing a um, kind of a challenge or a controversial sort of issue. The major threats include wildfire and the accompanying uh, invasive species, invasive plant species that uh, go along with these large wildfires. Wildfires totally wipe out sage grouse habitat. Fuel brakes, putting fuel brakes in, it gives them something to work with um, where they've got a break here where, the, where it's defensible. Conditions are extreme, at least they can compartment that fire to 50 to 100,000 acres rather than you know, some of these fires are 400,000 acres plus, which that's a huge detriment to sage grouse. With uh, some of the changes that have occurred in the last 150 years since humans have been here, at least, at least uh, European settlers have been here, um, juniper has started to invade the shrub step um, landscape um, and if allowed to invade unchecked will lose that sagebrush which is so important to, to the wildlife to utilize Heart Mountain. So we are in the process and have been for, for a few years now of, of basically taking that juniper that's coming down to the sagebrush and, and removing it back to where it might exist naturally. Here in Oregon, we've basically uh, solved about 68% of this juniper problem on our priority private lands. And so we can start to measure this and, and show that we're making demonstrable progress. So yeah, I'm optimistic about the trajectory. So I'm very optimistic, and one of the reasons why is that collaboration is really breaking down old barriers. Agencies are working together, stakeholders are at the table, the, you know, whether it's ranchers and environmentalists, we're all you know, pulling towards that common objective of trying to keep the sage grouse you know, on the landscape and healthy populations. I'm highly encouraged. Uh, you know, we started out in this effort, now it seems over two years ago, and in fact, I was part of the team in 2005 that made the uh, not warranted finding for Fish and Wildlife Service, and then again part of the team in 2010 that made the warranted but precluded finding, and now here we are uh, again five years later. So it's been a total of 10 years that we've been working on this. In Oregon and other states, stakeholders including cattlemen and sportsmen, along with federal and state agencies, are working hard to keep the greater sage grouse from becoming endangered. We encourage all states to join the effort. Together we can protect this iconic bird local economies, and our Western way of life.